Anyway, today we're here with Kay Hapshi, who is, works with the Senior Center and also does programs for the um, Beverly COA, which is the um, Council on Aging, which has the Senior Center in Beverly. And so what I'm going to do is just ask Kay to tell us what she does and what the Senior Center is, what um, senior care is, and how it all fits together. And then we're going to get on to the fact of doing the um, honoring choices which she presents at the Senior Center also. So, Beautiful. Kay, I'm leaving it up to you. All right, well, thank you very much for having me here today. And <laughs> so this is great, because one of the things I love, and you'll probably figure out now, because I'm trying to slow myself down, is I love to talk, and I'm a fast <laughs> talker. Um, and so, but I'm not a close talker. Oh, that's a good so, thing. So that's yeah. good. But in any case, Senior Care and the Senior Center are, I view us as, par as a partnership because they do, from my sense, I, go to, I would recommend anyone go to the Council Aging if they're looking for information about their town, information about activities, if they're feeling a tad lonely, if they would like, just like to get out. Like, I get itchy if I'm home for too long. So going to the senior center, there's a lot of socialization, there's a lot of group activities, there's exercises, there's yoga. There's, I see a bunch of yeah. people playing cribbage. Um, they just, you know, I've seen people watch TV. I've seen people talk. And, and they do offer, they have like meals or whatever. And, Correct. And movie nights and stuff like All that. All that there, stuff. Right? And they're open actually Thursday nights as well. Um, so it's not just, because a lot of you are like, oh, I'm too young for the senior center. No, no. Um, and you're like, no. Because <laughs> okay. knitters go there. Um, readers go there. It's just awesome to see. And bands play there. It's just really yeah. great. So, so how does senior care and the senior center coexist? Seniors Care is an elder service agency, and so what we do is sort of, we fill in gaps that relate to in-home related things. We're not the visiting nurse, because that is someone that you get when you've been hospitalized, had an event, uh, have a clinical assessment that's needed for something, uh, a diagnosis that's new. Yeah. The visiting nurse will come and help you with all of those kind of a beginning tasks. They're not there to be there every day. They're not going to do right. your wash. They're not going to, you know, do th like mow your lawn, stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, so what is elder services? Because so a lot of people, when they hear that, they're like, oh, elder? Really? What does that really mean? <laughs> um, and it's not. It's it. I view, what's a senior? A senior is anyone who, frankly, works with others, typically to qualify for state services. And I'm not going to spend the whole time talking about that. Okay. That's a detail you don't right. need. But yeah. basically, in Massachusetts, you're a senior when you're 60. But a lot of the senior centers will let you come earlier because of the fact they have activities. They're, trying, they're looking for volunteers. They do transportation. Um, the Beverly Council on Aging does a terrific job at trying to integrate all of these things. They have okay. outreach coordinators so that if you're like, I'm having a problem and I'm out of money and I need to redo my roof, what can I do? They can start you on the journey of what might be out there. Then... Um, Outreach might be, I'm having trouble trying to find somewhere for my mother to go during the day because she's lonely. Then you can talk to someone at the Council on Aging. They have SHINE counselors. Do you know what the yeah. SHINE acronym is? I that, don't know what the acronym is. I know what they do. All right. It's Serving Health Insurance Needs for Everyone. Oh, my and God. Okay. I know. Who would think? Right. But um, it's excellent when you're trying to figure out which plan am I adding to my Medicare? Or for me, for example, I'm turning 65 this summer. So okay. I was, I had and to decide which plan I wanted. Right. And insurance, there's so much to know, but the Shine counselor met with me personally, asked mm -hmm. me some questions, wanted to know different things about medication. Then got into the computer and printed out and said, these are some plans you should consider. That was actually my first introduction to the uh, senior center was that I went for the I love shine it. counselor. That's, so there like, you go. Okay, and, and having been a nurse for so many years, you'd think I'd know something more about this. 
there, Medicare is a world. And I'm the same, because I'm a social worker, and we right. think we know everything, right. but we don't. Um, well, Medicare is a whole world on its, its own. So exactly. It's, you know. So they were really helpful to me. And during the pandemic, actually, my husband um, needed to speak with someone from Sean, and we did it over the phone. It went really well. Yeah. Um, so they try to meet you where you're at. But so, so I look at it as, what's my first step if I'm curious about how my neighborhood works and I'm aging? I would visit my Council on Aging just to kind of take a look. They have a calendar. They have a newsletter. You can get it uh, emailed. You can get a paper copy. And that would give you a sense of, like, hey, I like to knit. Are there other knitters out there? And then that connects you with one group because, like, the knitting is something that is on my list. I'd like to learn <laughs> okay. how to knit. Yeah. Um, but, for example, Senior Care has a whole volunteer group that they knit. And so they're connected a lot of times with the Council on Aging. They knit things for kids, babies, blankets. One year they were doing uh, liners for uh, helmets. Oh, wow. Um, you know, for the when we were actively. Yeah. Um, and it just, to me, it's fascinating what they can make and do. And so I view it this way. Your first step should be to the Council on Aging to see what they have, what you might like, and what you might not. Then they also do very tangible things, like the outreach, transportation. They have a shuttle bus that you can sign up for. They can explain how transportation works, because say you're not driving as much. That's right. really important to kind of know, well, what are my options? How do I get around? And, that, and that's where the council on aging would be your first step. Well, these are the things you can get here. These okay. are the things we can tell you about. And then that's when they might make a referral to senior care. Because one of the things that I do at Senior Care is I'm an options counselor. And okay. so an options counselor means I help people navigate the landscape. And um, so for me, navigating the landscape means, I, I look at it this way, I have friends who when they had special needs, ch children with special needs, that was a whole new landscape to learn. How does it work? Who right. do you complain to? Who do you not complain to? How, what is my child entitled to? What can I not get? Right. It's and, like a confusing landscape correct. out there for all and, of that. And trying to navigate that world, you learn so much from other people. And how did you learn so much about that? I'm curious. I actually you know? have a niece with special needs. She's now okay. an adult. Um, but at the same point, it was watching and helping her mother go through some of those things. That um, it, But it taught me, like, for example, someone with a cancer diagnosis. How does that work? What does that mean? Where do I go? Like, they're not, you know, just trying to, like, figure out who do I talk to, who do I ask. And the same thing with being a veteran. A lot of veterans are like, don't talk to me about the right. veterans. Um, but they do a lot of wonderful things, and they can help you in ways that maybe you don't realize. And so, so what does that mean for options counseling? I'm like step two. I look at it this way. You're aging. You have an aging uh, partner, parent, sibling, any, any aspect that you want to kind of see how it works. That's when you go to the council on aging. They will then connect you with someone like Senior Care, because every town usually okay. has a Council on Aging. And in Beverly, you're blessed. They have a great Council on Aging. Um, and so I on that, that, exactly, isn't it? They do yeah. a great job. They do. They're amazing with it. And so on that aspect, so what is Elder Services? Elder Services could be anything from someone's taking advantage of you financially. And so people make what they call a protective service report. And a lot of people are like, oh, no, no, no. But it's kind of right. someone to come in and help. Like, what if you can't go to the store and your neighbors can't keep going grocery shopping so, for you? So you also would be, like, for the abuse aspect? Correct. Elder care, elder services? Absolutely. Stuff? So that I view senior care as a hub of different services than the council on aging. Council okay. on aging, we know, has entertainment, activities, events, uh, meals, Things right. like that. They teach classes. They actually have office hours once a month for senior care. I actually come on the first Wednesday of the month. I'm there for two hours, and I meet with walk-ins who just come in and say, how does this work, or where is this, or I'm having trouble with that. Um, and the questions can range from, like, I'm being evicted. What do I do? Uh, it doesn't mean I can solve right. that, but I can get you started on a road.
oh, okay. as so. can the Council on Aging. So for, I'm going to give an example in housing. Someone who's living in an, um, supportive housing, meaning that they get meals, it's not, it's more of an assisted living, but not, because it, they can, it's their own apartment. When you say they get meals, is they, the meals on wheels type no, of thing? No, they actually get meals at the site. Oh, they're at, at the an site. assisted okay. living, but All it's right. very expensive, and right. they're running out of money. So they came to the Council on Aging and said, well, what can I do? I can't afford to live here. Uh, and so they met first with an outreach committee, a um, worker, Amanda Kirk, she was excellent, there's plenty, um, but in any case, and she sort of laid out what types of housing out there, got them some applications, then she made an appointment for them to come see me on one of my office hour days, and so then we sat down and I went through and explained, well, how does this housing work? What's HUD housing? What's state housing? What's supplemental housing aids, what are grants, things like that. Oh and my so God, there's a lot to there's a lot, exactly. Yeah. And so did I solve the woman's immediate problem? No, because I don't I don't have funds to just keep paying her bills at the assisted right. living. But we got her started on getting set up for later. Because the other thing that housing is very big with today is that people don't realize the wait list. You need to think oh. ahead five, ten years. Well, everybody right now is saying affordable housing. They're building, right. trying to get buildings, and you know, right. Beverly and certainly is building a lot. You know? Right, and so. assisted living is not inexpensive. It, it can be wonderful, oh, can but be it's terrible, terribly but expensive. it's expensive. Exactly, and so that you know how how to navigate that. That's where a lot of people are like, well, I'm just going to die here. I'm going to die in my bed. I'll be fine, and that doesn't happen, unfortunately. Right. We know, right. And so, and, and that's the thing is you have to think about, well, what if I can't? Because the other thing that as an options counselor, I spent um, over 15 years working in senior care as a care manager. Yeah, yeah. And so that would be someone who maybe the council and agent said, you, you would benefit from in-home help. Um, and to go full privately, they don't have that much money. Right. They want state subsidized services. So that's what senior care can help with. So state subsidized services, right. they, they pay a portion? They or do. They, okay. So the state actually has us set up with, because the Council on Aging is a free service that you pay for what you use, and they like donations and contributions yeah. toward things. If you eat a meal there, they have a minimum donation, that kind of thing. If you go to an event, they want... If you take a ride, they need money toward transportation, stuff like that. But senior care is not the visiting nurse. The visiting nurse is there for critical events, post-diagnosis, hospitalization, and it's all billed through Medicare. And most people at 65 plus are enrolled in Medicare. Right. Um, and so that bill goes there. And because Medicare is paying the bill, it's only a short period of time. They're going to help you address the crisis, but they're not going to stay there forever to resolve ongoing issues. And that's when senior care comes in. We usually follow the okay. VNA. And frankly, for a lot of people, they're like, who are you again? Why are you here? <laughs> right. What can you provide? And you had mentioned Meals on Wheels. Right. People who get out and about will go to the Council on Aging for lunch. They sign up a day or two before, and it's social and right. it's set time. There's people who can't do that, so they might use senior care to get a Meals on Wheels. And so that um, you would get someone to knock on your door Monday through Friday, they would have a warm meal. There's also okay. other extensions on it, but I'm not gonna bore you with that right, level of so detail. Yeah, okay. But basically, um, you just need to be 60 and older, caregiver for someone 60 and older and if they're 60 and older they can get a meal too but it's someone who comes and knocks on your door okay. and hands you a meal and um, it's a nutritionally right. balanced meal and that's also like sort of checking on you correct it's a wonderful you know? thing to know someone because because what right. happens if they knock on the door and you're not answering right they have to tell someone. Right. They don't necessarily go call the police. That's not necessarily right, but helpful. They have to tell, let somebody know. That, so when you know, we sign you up for a meal, we get an emergency contact name, and um, so on that aspect, that's who we will try to call. And okay. then worst case, we might call the police saying emergency contact's not answering. Phone person hasn't right. answered the phone or the door. Uh, yeah. And no one canceled because you can cancel them. Say I'm not going to be home next week. I'm right. going to my nieces. 
Just like the mail. You can tell the exactly. mail not to come this exactly. week, you know. So. Exactly. So it comes it's, back to like sort of, and I'm cutting you off. I do that no, all no, the time. No, no, that's okay. I just, because our little thing is not working there. Right. I know we will want to also move on to um, the, what you actually Honoring. do at the senior right. center for the honorary. Right. Places. So honoring but choices. What you were but I'm going to yes. So then you have basically. So no. you have different pools that you get help. The council on aging for independent people who are looking for events. And what does independent mean? You can call and get asked for a ride. You can walk in and you can take yourself to the bathroom. You can sit down and get a drink of water. You can chat. But it doesn't mean you have to be highly social. Um, you know, because there's plenty of people that just go and attend an event and they're quiet. Then there's other I people. I can understand that. Exactly. <laughs> that talk incessantly. incessantly. Oh, sure. But, um, you know, it's and, and you can always say, well, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I need to go. Uh, when they talk incessantly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no. But then you have senior care, which does a hub of things. We have, we have someone who works actually with pet care. So, like, say you are going into a nursing home for rehab, they actually can help set you up. It won't necessarily be free, but they'll set you up with people to help come watch your pet, walk your dog, things of that nature. We have Meals on Wheels. We have protective services. We have care managers. We have caregiver support. Um, they have, um, actually, they meet at the Council on Aging, and they have a support group for caregivers. Because um, sometimes it's nice just to talk to someone when you're, because right. a caregiver, it's very it's, important they oh. pay attention to themselves right. and to the care they're providing. They get worn out so easily, you Absolutely. Know? I know when my mother was in her final years, um, my brother's mother-in-law actually said to me, Kay, you need to ask for help because you're aging in front of me. Uh, and I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> but the reality but is true. really thanks. That right. was Because she knew me, has known me for years enough to say, do right. something. And, um, and it is to have have people like that in your life is a good thing. Absolutely, you know? so. and so caregiver supports there. Then they have a whole arm called RSVP, which is senior volunteer. So there's a lot of people who are like you know I always wanted to do X, Y, or Z, and so what they do is when you want to volunteer, you don't just show up for an event. You show up and they do kind of an invitational briefing and they ask you a question of what you like. Then they share the network of people looking for volunteers. So we have people that deliver. For meals, we have people that drive people to appointments, medical appointments. We have people that work in um, centers. We have people that work in offices. You mentioned before people come to you and say, I need somebody to mow my lawn. Do you have people that do that? Per se, no, but we have ways to tell you. We have lists of people who mow lawns. We have programs. Sometimes the high schools have a fall cleanup thing. We'll, oh, we'll connect right. people with that. Right. So there are a lot. And then uh, Beverly has something called Bondaloop, uh, which was started at... Bondaloop? I don't have any ownership in it, but it's, okay. it's a task agency. Oh, that okay. You right. type in what you need. They look to see if they have a worker. It's not free, but at the same point pretty helpful if right. you want something like that. And then sometimes the in-home help would be like homemaking. Uh, yeah. It could be someone to help you shower or bathe, dress. It really depends on your level of need. And okay. so there's, the care managers that do the intake can explain how all those details work. Because when I said state subsidized earlier, yeah. at the end of the day, Medicare pays for X based on coding and what the need is. They'll pay for the nurse to do X, Y, or Z. The Council on Aging provides services. Senior care provides things. Some are free, some are at reduced cost, and some are on a sliding scale. So that what's a typical package? Someone could come into senior care who's had an event, maybe a stroke, and isn't, their body isn't working quite the way it used to, and their recovery yeah. period is longer. So okay. they might come in and say, I could use a few meals. I could use someone to help me do my grocery shopping. I could use a ride to the doctor's appointment. And um, I need one of those I've fallen and can't get up button systems. <laughs> right. And, uh, which, right. you know, it's, right. and there's all different systems as to how they work. There's medication dispensing devices. So it, it's really about, I view it this way, is what's out there? How does it work? How do I get it? And at the end of the day, all three agencies that I mentioned, Visiting Nurse, Council on Aging, and Senior Care, we're not profit makers. We're not right. out here to try to make money. We're trying, but we have to charge. 
at senior care, a sliding scale, meaning if you make $10,000 a month, you're going to pay less for your right. service than the one. One of the good things is that you are not for profit, whereas for right. now, so much of health care has gone profit making. Right, you know? exactly. And, it's really, it's and, and a lot of times it does seem unfair in terms of, like, I saved all my life for what? <laughs> right. But it's. That's just, it you got to do. Like, my mother was a very smart young woman who understood the stock market. Oh, she had I, an advantage. She did very well. So. And I did not follow in her footsteps. So I'm not going to do as well. But at the same point, she had money to pay for people to do things um, at different points that someone else doesn't have. And that's yeah. what an options counselor and a care manager do is they help you navigate. So then... The next thing to talk about, though, that's very important is honoring choices because right. that's another navigation. Death and dying is scary. I won't deny that. And We don't talk about it in our society most. You absolutely. Know. Maybe when Tuesdays with Maurice was out, people paid attention to that, right. the role okay. of volunteering and presence and activity and living while dying. But right. at the same point, when I was a child, hospice meant you were likely going to die in two weeks. Right. And so they, nobody was like, no, don't call the hospice people. I'm not dying. I, well, still you have people who say, don't say hospice in front of them. You right. Know, it's, it's it like, scares them. Absolutely. Right. But hospice today doesn't mean that. Hospice means you are likely to die within six months of whatever medical condition you have. Right. But it doesn't mean you will. Like, I remember when I was a care manager, I had a client who had a hospice worker. She had yeah. heart issues. And I followed her through my senior care hat. I was an options counsel. Then I was a regular care manager. And so her daughter called and said, oh, she went to the hospice house. And I was like, oh, I'm really sorry to hear that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Two weeks later, I'm in the building this woman lives in. She's like, yeah. hey, Kay, how are you? It, one of the things is, I, being a hospice nurse for so many years and stuff, too, was you would see people come on who really seemed like, oh, they had very short time. You right. Know. But then hospice, because of the individual attention, because of that whole, you know, they, changing of medication. Exactly. They'd be fine. They'd be, you know, but it was, I mean, not fine. They'd still no, have no, the, but the, the disease. No, no, but the condition, but still. Right. But she was but, like, look at me. I bet you didn't right. expect to see me here. And I'm like, and I it, didn't. Right. And hospice stayed with her because, as you right. said, the condition didn't go limiting. away. Right. It just, but. So anyway, honoring choices, what is that? That's a free program that's offered in Massachusetts and in many states. And they have health care proxies. They have samples for power of attorneys. They have personal um, responsibility kind of statements, which some people know as five wishes. It's not that document. But what am I talking about? To me, knowing about honoring choices is honoring your choice. Your, your right. choice might be, I don't want to be on a feeding tube ever. Right. And you need your world to know that. Because what happens for the caregivers is they don't necessarily know exactly what their sister, brother, child, right. parent, relative, neighbor really thinks right. as to what they, is important to them. And so Honoring Choices is a guide. It's online. You can print papers. I meet with people a lot of times talking about it. And so on, the thing I love is it's free, and it's got conversational snippet points talking about what is palliative care, what does that mean, right. uh, which for those of you who don't know, and half the time I pronounce it wrong, is it palliative or palliative? Uh, uh, people pronounce it both ways. Okay. You know, palliative uh, is, you know, I pronounce it. But. That's what I view as a bridge to hospice. It means something severe is happening that requires some guidance, but it's not, you're not technically close to dying yet. Right. Doesn't mean you can't die while on palliative care, but... but right. Um, but it's like their palliative is sort of receive, relieving the symptoms that you have for beautiful. whatever you have going on. And they can know? be an ally if you need, like they recommend, like they'll talk about this drug and say, well, what do you mean you don't have access to that? Right. That doesn't mean they're going to solve it, but they're going to talk about, well, it's, this is who you should talk to. They're going to try to help you have the best quality of life you can have. Correct. You know. And, like, for example, I didn't know that when one is in hospice, you can actually get um, dialysis. A dialysis used to be a no, but that's a care and comfort right. thing. Um, it, dialysis isn't a reason for hospice, but a lot of people are like, oh, I can't have hospice because I have dialysis. No, 
It, right, because it is. It depends on, on how and what stage you're at and right. what you know the, the and, consequences of not having the right. dialysis will be. And the thing I like about honoring choices is you lay out your health care proxy. You name someone. And the thing that's really helpful is there's two layers to it. There's, you have a health care proxy where you name someone and you talk about your wishes as to what's important to you. Like, for example, my mother had dementia. Long before she was unable to speak, we talk, I asked her, what's oh, important? Right. What's, and she said, I love music. I want to be somewhere that and there's it, music playing, turn the radio on. If I can't tell you to turn the radio on, I want you to know to turn, turn the, radio the radio on. on. <laughs> right. um, and things like that. And so that it was very helpful for that discussion. And she was able to talk through, like, well, what does this mean, no compressions? Because um, sometimes people have brittle bones and they're very fragile. So oh, CPR right. is not the solution. Um, right. It, it is, I mean, even like... I'm, for my own experience here right. was when I went in the hospital and I had a respiratory failure issue and I had said that I wanted to be a DNR. Right. Well, they asked me and said to me, you know, okay, it's like not the time to happen because right. you're not quite with it. Oh, well, you don't want to be on a ventilator then. Do you want to be on, uh, you know, a, a uh, uh, APAP thing? And, and it's like, uh, sure, you know, but right. it's like that's not the time to make those decisions. Correct, because you're not thinking straight. The people but, who are in your life aren't thinking straight. Right. Um, it's upsetting, and they also don't know wishes. I was having this conversation with a girlfriend. Right. She'd been in a long-term relationship with this fellow 30 years. They each had children before they got together, and um, everyone was fine. But she and I were talking about, well, what's the important? Why do you need a health care proxy? Because uh, right. she was his health care proxy. He was hers. Uh, but they never thought about what their children's view was. And in this conversation that she and I had, she went then home and had it with her partner. And he's yeah. like, oh, I want you to do everything you can. You never know. They could do something. They could come up right. with something. And do it all until there's nothing to be done. And she's like, oh, oh no. Do not that, do everything. Right. Give, give right. me Comfort, this, that, but stop. And so she said, thank goodness we had that conversation between the two of them because we then had it with our children before anything went wrong right. or happened. And that way I knew he wants everything. And can you imagine the fight his daughters and I would have had? Because they probably knew that about him maybe. And right. I didn't. And so that's what, to me, ha naming a health care proxy does. Um, then... Um, the other thing is the personal responsibility thing. The other thing is power of attorney. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't want, you know, to give someone else authority. Right. Well, it is true, but there's sometimes there is someone in your life that you feel you can trust. Like my mother, her resolution was she put both my brother and I on her checking account. I was the healthy health care proxy, but that gave us access to help when we needed to pay bills. Right. Then I was the power of attorney so that I could go then when more bills needed to be paid than were in the checking account, I had access to that right. kind of thing. So, so it is a trust thing. Right, um, it really it, it is. And I think this is something that we really could take an entire hour or more. You could, absolutely. You know? And then there might be those of you out there, my, I, we're probably wrapping up now, right. um, the, is, well, I don't have children, siblings, spouse, partner. I don't have those people in my life. Um, and there's a lot of people out there who don't. And so and, then the yeah. question is, look for an ally. One, you still want to fill out the forms. You still want, because you want to know what your wishes are. You want to share those with your doctor's office so that they know what you want. Right. Um, then the other thing is you might find an ally, a neighbor, a friend, who be, I'll be your health care proxy, you be mine. Right. And so that way I actually have a friend that she and I have that agreement. Because she said, oh, my husband will never follow what right. I exactly want. I want you to be my health care proxy. So right. fine with that. And um, so that ask someone. But the other thing you can do is put your wishes together if you live in a building right. and put and it on put, your door. Right. File of life is another document. Put it on the refrigerator. I mean, you know, right. any, anywhere that someone coming in can right. see that that's there and you'll have it. And the thing is to share that information because... When in times of crisis, people fight unnecessarily. Oh, it's, it's a just, terrible time. It is. And so to know, and if you are named as the health care proxy, you have to be sure that you're going to fight for them. If they say right. they are a DNR, meaning do not resuscitate, 
You're the advocate to make Just sure that happens. That happens. You know? And then wow. some people will be like, well, what if, when? Yeah. And that's when something like the MOLST form, M-O-L-S-T, uh, Medical Orders of Last Standing. Right. You fill it out with a medical professional. It's hot pink right now, and it's two-sided. Right. But it goes through, I don't want compressions. I do want compressions. I want a feeding tube. I don't want a feeding tube. Right. I want this. I want that. And it's got a very clinical yeah. description. Um, and to go through it and look at it for your own opinion is good. You can also print one off the internet for free. Right. Um, your doctor will introduce it at some point, but not necessarily. And I over talked probably. So where are well, we? Well, I'm do not you think? right. We're not quite sure. But I think we right. I think this is really. And I think for additional information, people should contact the senior center or senior care directly right. or whatever. But or sign up and come to your. Uh, Wednesdays, first Wednesday of the month, 12 to 2. Uh, uh, and what I do is if I'm meeting someone, I leave a piece of paper outside for you to put your name and number on. So if you can't hang on till they're done, I'll call you. And okay. options counseling is free. It's done in, in your home. I've met people at Dunkin' Donuts. I've met them at their homes. I've met them um, at the office. We get some space. Um, I've met people, you know, in a park. It, it's it, not about the place it's about the conversation right and it's right. short term it's free so for example this afternoon i'm going to meet with the family um and one sounds like one elder is starting to have some difficulties the other one wants to know what's out there and her daughter wants to know too so that right. and he's going to be there as well and i think i think it's like hopefully we can have you back here for another you know Talk about all of this at all. Right. But it's like, it is. It's fascinating stuff, and a lot of people don't know anything about it. And isn't it? And just but, knowing your own choices. Right. I, like, what does that mean? Right. And, and to become, I mean, to start talking about these right. things. The older you get, the more you think, hmm, it's going to happen. Death is inevitable. And but, then also know. redo it. Because that's the other thing, is I do it, periodically honoring choices at different places. And this fellow came in, it was like 83. Right. And he said, I did one at 65. And I realized the decisions I made then are not the decisions I would make today. <laughs> right, right. Um, it is. I mean, you change as you as you go through life. We do, you know? we do indeed. So, but, well, this was a pleasure, well, Lynn. Thank well, you. I appreciate you coming and being here. I think it really is essential that we get people to really understand and know that they have choices. Right. That, you know, you don't want to just all of a sudden. Right. Be and, gone and not have anything. You know, right, and pick the your advocate you well. Make sure it's uh, someone who will fight, fight the fight for you. Someone who will fight, and it, it is that's hard because it's like it's hard to fight against a, right. a medical system. Right, this is system. what he, she, mom, dad, auntie right. would want, right. and they told me so, that. So hopefully we'll have more discussions like Absolutely. this. Absolutely, and I know we're having another one of the other uh, volunteers is doing a discussion about um, doula death oh, doulas. Oh, death doulas, and beautiful. Hopefully we'll get. People moving towards thinking about the fact that they have to make some decisions. Do it now. while you're feeling well. Yes, yes. And not afraid. Okay, because when I had that thing where they said, do you want to go on, on the BiPAP? It's like, uh, I don't know. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know? Isn't it? It's very hard. I made hard. those decisions beforehand. And exactly. It and have been easier. And whoever's in your life, sometimes they're like, oh, I don't even know what she wants. Right. Um, so it is. So you, you need to talk to people. So, well, we thank you for watching, and we hopefully we'll see you again. All right.